Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to welcome all general officers, command sergeants major, other distinguished guests, friends, family, and soldiers. Welcome to the 4th Striker Brigade Combat Team Inactivation and Color Casing Ceremony. Please, please feel free to come forward at any time during the ceremony and take photographs, except during the national anthem. The host of today's ceremony is Major General Terry Farrell, Commanding General of the 7th Infantry Division. The Commander of Troops is Major Kevin Bradley, the Brigade Executive Officer. The 4th Striker Brigade Combat Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Stephen Young. Ladies and gentlemen, as a token of appreciation for her contributions to the Brigade, Sergeant Dennison will present a bouquet of red roses to Colonel Miller's wife, Mrs. Stacy Miller. Providing the music for today's ceremony is the 56th Army Band, the heartbeat of America's Corps, and is led by Warrant Officer 4, Jeffrey Larson, and Sergeant Major Adam Heffelfinger. Units on the floor in front of you are from left to right. 4-9 Infantry, Manchu, commanded by Major Keith Carter and Sergeant Major Tony Holcomb, consisting of HHC, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie Companies of 4-9 Infantry, and 472nd Signal Company. 223 Infantry, Tomahawk, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Felty and First Sergeant Shelley Jenkins, consisting of HHC, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie Companies of 223 Infantry and 38th Engineer Company. 138 Infantry, Rock, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Floyd Sheldon and Sergeant Major Tony Winters, consisting of HHC, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie Companies of 138 Infantry and Fox 52nd Anti-Tank Company. 2-1 Cav, Black Hawk, commanded by Major David Fulton and, commanded, and Command Sergeant Major, Major Brett Waterhouse, consisting of HHT, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie Troops of 2-1 Cav and 45th Military Intelligence Company. 2-12 Field Artillery, Viking, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel William Downing and Command Sergeant Major Robert Kearns, consisting of HHB, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie Batteries of 212 and Headquarters and Headquarters Company, 4-2 Striker Brigade Combat Team. The 702nd Brigade Support Battalion, Forge, is led by Lieutenant Colonel Scott Dobozinski and Command Sergeant Major Anthony Fortuna, consisting of HHC, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie Companies. U.S. ceremonies date to the days of Continental Army at Valley Forge. Baron von Steuben, the first Inspector General of the Army, wrote the original manual by which military ceremonies were conducted in America. The Continental Army conducted the first ceremonial review in 1778 at Valley Forge. Referred to as the Grand Review, it was conducted to celebrate the Treaty of Alliance with France. During the review, brigades were posted and paraded in the order of battle. Present day ceremonies like the one you will witness this morning are conducted to render honors, preserve tradition, and inspire esprit de corps. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and for today's ceremony and the rendering of honors.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation by Chaplain Dawood Agberry and remain standing for our national anthem. Please, let's pray. God Almighty, thank you for the faithful service of the soldiers, leaders, and families, past and present, of the 4th Striker Brigade Combat Team to our country. We especially remember and pray this morning for the many Raiders who paid the ultimate sacrifice serving under the colors of this unit. God, we pray that their sacrifices may not be in vain. God, cause the legacy of the 4th Brigade Combat Team to be a shining light for future generations of soldiers and leaders, even as we bring its cherished story to a close. In your name we pray. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The 4th Brigade, 2nd Infantry Division, Raiders, activated at Fort Lewis, Washington on 1 June 2006 after forming as the Army's 4th Striker Brigade 16 months earlier. In April 2007, the Brigade deployed to Iraq with the command team of Colonel John Lair and Command Sergeant Major John Troxell as part of President Bush's surge strategy and became the first striker brigade to deploy with all 10 variants of the striker combat vehicle. During more than 13 months of operations, the Raider Brigade successfully conducted nine brigade level operations and more than 550 battalion and company sized operations throughout Baghdad's Northern Belt and the Diyali province. These operations yielded more than 700 enemy killed in action and wounded in action, with more than 1,700 insurgents detained and over 200 high-value targets captured. In addition, over 550 caches were discovered and more than 2,200 IEDs were cleared. This Herculean effort provided space and time for the Iraqi people to take control of their own destiny and begin the process of reconciliation, rebuilding, and self-government. Upon return from Iraq in June 2008, the Raider Brigade re began repairing, replacing, and fielding new equipment in preparation for their next deployment. 
In September 2009, the Raider Brigade deployed to Iraq for the second time under the command of Colonel John Norris and Command Sergeant Major Jeff Hudgens. On September 28, 2009, 4th Brigade's 2nd Infantry Division assumed authority over Western Baghdad. The Brigade partnered with the 6th and 9th Iraqi Army Divisions, 6th Brigade, 2nd Federal Police Division, and with local Iraqi police and Sons of Iraq in an area of considered Iraq's center of gravity. After 17 years of war, the 4-2 Striker Brigade Combat Team was the last combat unit to depart Iraq. Approximately 2,000 Raiders conducted a tactical road march from Victory Base Complex in Camp Taji in mid-August to Kuwait. Dubbed the last patrol, soldiers drove a total of 360 vehicles, including 320 strikers, 360 miles from Baghdad to Kuwait. Similar to how units first entered Iraq more than seven years prior, the tactical road march from Baghdad began early morning of August 15th, with the final element crossing the Kuwaiti border August 19th. The Raider Brigade's departure from Iraq represented the symbolic end of Operation Iraqi Freedom and the beginning of Operation New Dawn on September 1st, 2010. On August 21st, the Brigade cased the colors in Kuwait for movement back to Joint Base lewis McCord, officially uncasing them on October 7th, 2010. Upon return from Iraq in August of 2010, the Raider Brigade again began repairing, replacing, and fielding new equipment for preparation for their next deployment. Once again, the call came and 4-2 Striker Brigade Combat Team was formally notified to prepare for Operation Enduring Freedom deployment to Iraq on April 19, 2012. The brigade began preparations in earns for deployment to southern Afghanistan. With training include a unified endeavor mission, command exercise with the 3rd Infantry Division at Fort Stewart, Georgia in May 2012 a mission readiness exercise at the National Training Center in June of 2012, and a brigade-directed small unit counter-improvised explosive device validation and advanced situation awareness training exercise at JBLM. Following pre-deployment training and soldier readiness processing, the brigade tasks organized for combat and deployed its equipment and personnel to Afghanistan's regional command south area of operations in November 2012 commanded by Colonel Mike Getchell and Command Sergeant Major Oscar Vinson. Throughout the nine-month Operation Enduring Freedom deployment, the Raiders responsibly closed 15 pieces of tactical infrastructure, executed 32 named operations, and conducted over 1,000 patrols partnered with Afghan forces. The brigade achieved tangible improvements with all of its Afghan National Security Force partners, coupled with the growing legitimacy and influence of government of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. The Army announced the inactivation of the brigade in June of 2013. Just as the brigade had begun redeployment operations, the brigade completed redeployment and began the process of inactivation. The Raider Brigade formally encased its colors following the deployment on September 11th. 2013 and was welcomed home by the city of Lakewood at a military parade and community celebration. In the months following redeployment from Afghanistan, the Raider Brigade began inactivation under the command of Colonel Jody Miller as he and Command Sergeant Major Vincent led the brigade through the process of property redistribution and personnel transition, ensuring that equipment was ready for turn-in and soldiers were prepared for their follow-on assignments. Raider soldiers worked tirelessly to turn in over 72,000 pieces of equipment and 314 strikers, completing all tasks to the highest standard, proving yet again that the Raider soldier is second to none. In fact, the legacy of the Raider Brigade will be the well-trained, disciplined, and professional soldiers that stand before you today.
The presence of colors in today's ceremony is of the utmost significance. The colors represent the soldiers, past and present, that comprises the unit and are the physical symbols of its spirit, tradition, and lineage. Located at a place of honor within the formation, the colors have traditionally served as a rally point for the soldiers during battle. In earlier times, the soldier entrusted with bearing the flags and emblems of the unit were expected to sooner part with their lives than with their colors. The act of casing the colors during today's inactivation ceremony represents a symbolic end of the Raider Brigade's journey in the Army organizational structure. The Brigade will live on through its soldiers who will carry on its legacy throughout the United States Army. At this time, Colonel Miller and Command Sergeant Major Young will case the Brigade colors and then the Battalion Commanders and Command Sergeant Major will case their respective battalion colors. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 7th Infantry Division, Major General Terry Farrell. And good morning. And good morning. It really is still morning. Look, hey, today's a great day. And I know that the mood in the room, the inactivation, but today's a day of celebration. So again, let's start this morning just a little different. The soldiers out here are phenomenal, so let's put a smile into this. Let's bring some warmth to our heart, and let's recognize the phenomenal formation that stands in front of you with a round of applause. This truly is a great honor, and it's a historical event, and we have some distinguished guests with us today, and thank all of you, General Lanza, Madeline, Michelle, thank you, all of the retired general officers, the other general officers in the room, sergeants, majors, distinguished 
community leaders from around the area, the city of Lakewood, and what you do for this brigade, family members, and the soldiers that have the opportunity to sit and observe, thank you all for being here today. Because today is truly, as I said, it's a joyous occasion. And we need to remember that as we go through this morning. But most importantly, it's a great day, and we have wonderful soldiers here participating as we go through the ceremony. And before I move any further, because I always notoriously do this, let's thank the band because they are really going to make today bright. So a round of applause for the band. And Stacy, you know, usually at the end you get identified, but thank you helping Jody through this. It's been a true challenge, not only as part of the deployment prior, but now as the inactivation and all the hard work that's gone on since the brigade has gone through preparations for this big day. It's been you being there beside him, helping the others. Could not have been done without that, and thank you very much for that. Hey, look, we've talked about uh, where they've come. You know, that young man started reading. I thought we were going to go through each weapon cache, each IED, and each deployment. And it would have been fitting because of what this brigade has been through. I can personally tell you from the day it's been activated to today when we do the inactivation, we pass these colors and other soldiers on through the ranks. They have done some phenomenal things. I personally, as I listen today, I personally can attest to their employment and as the surge, one of the surge brigades, because I too had the privilege of being one of those formations that went as the surge. And now that I realize that actually one, two, three was just a little to my north and on many occasions, we actually had the opportunity to touch hands and work together. And what those young men were able to accomplish, those young men and women in that formation during the surge, actually changed the tone in that country. And because of their efforts, both in the north and in the center, in and around the Baghdad area, makes a difference. And that's why we're able to do what we're doing today. Not only were they able to do that with the surge, but they asked them to come back and help shut down the country. And they did that in first class. And yes, I too can associate with that. That's a long, long drive. Just imagine going in, now you gotta come out, and you did it, and you did it very well, and you set the standard for our nation, and that's what's so impressive. But again, it's because of the people that's in this formation. It's because of the men and women have walked in this formation prior to these men and women standing in our formation. It's the quality of soldiers that we have. But they were not done. They got the call one more time. And with the support of this joint base and the support of the communities, they were able to go to Afghanistan. And there, they faced an even greater threat. There, they faced even tougher challenges. And once again, they rose to the occasion. It didn't matter if it was the Manchus. It didn't matter if it was the Tomahawks. It didn't matter if it was the Cav. And yes, I do love the Cav. And those, those Stetsons look pretty good today, by the way. Um, I'll leave it at that. They look pretty good. They couldn't have done any of that without their artillery brother and sisters and, of course, their support. And to cover the missions in Afghanistan, it truly was a challenge, but they did that as well. And they set conditions to where we are today to allow us to see ourselves out of that country in the coming months in the future. One of the greatest challenges they had was to actually get short notice, come back, and then go through the process, a Herculean task of coming back home, trying to rest, recover, and refocus and actually get the inactivation order. And as it was identified, about 72,000 pieces of equipment. Most importantly, that equipment is very, very important, but it's the men and women that make up this formation that is the most important. And the proper care and nurturing and taking care of the families that go along with that, they've done that in first class style. And today we stand here and look at the casing of the colors. But it's not done. We've actually got the future brigade commander that will take these colors and go forth to Fort Carson. Colonel Hodney and his sergeant major are here to take them and safeguard them and move them to Carson. And the legacy of this brigade, the legacy of Fort 2, will live forever because it will live not only in the communities around JBLM, but it will live within our ranks because of the soldiers, the young men and women, the leaders that will go forth from here and continue to do the wonderful things that they've done to make this brigade such a fantastic organization. So again, I start with telling you to be happy. I'll close with telling you to be happy, to be proud that we're a part of this and we can share just a few minutes of our time with an organization that is so unique. One that shares the profession of arms, one that is a member of our United States Army, one that may be the party, but trust me, 
It will still be amongst our ranks. It will still be in our hearts. And it will always be a part of us. So thank you for being here today. God bless this formation, our great nation, and JBLM and all the soldiers within the division. Trust in me. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the Raider Brigade, Colonel Jody Miller. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow commanders, command sergeants, major friends and supporters of the 4-2 Striker Brigade, most importantly, our soldiers that are here today. On behalf of all of the past and present soldiers and leaders of the brigade, I welcome you to our inactivation ceremony. As you heard uh, General Farrell say, special uh, welcome to Colonel Hodney and Command Sergeant Major Rebuck. Thanks for making the trip out here from Fort Carson and being with, being with us here today. You know, nearly eight years ago, here at JBLM over on Gray Army Airfield, in fact, in a deluge rainstorm, uh, the 2nd Cavalry Regiment, the Dragoons, were reflagged to become the 4th Brigade 2nd Infantry Division, the Dragoon Raider Brigade. And the squadrons of 2CR were reflagged into our, their current composition of 4-2, making the Raider Brigade the fourth of the Army's six planned active component Striker Brigade combat teams. Over the years, the brigade has cased and uncased its colors for three separate combat deployments and has passed those colors between countless incoming and outgoing command teams at the company, battalion, and brigade level. So today is a very bittersweet day as we celebrate the accomplishments of this great brigade and pay tribute to the Raider soldiers of past and present. As you know, the colors and lineage of 4-2, as well as those of the 702nd Brigade Support Battalion and five of our separate companies, they will be cased indefinitely today and the service of those units will be suspended until the nation calls again. However, for Ford 9 Infantry, 223, 138, 21 Cab, 212 Field Artillery, their lineage and service to the nation will continue as they transition from Joint Base Lewis McCord to Fort Carson, Colorado, to their new home with the aptly named Raiders of First Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division which will in fact reflag as a striker BCT on Monday. So those five Army units will begin their next phase of their story journey, a journey that began here at JBLM with stops in Louisiana and Fort Irwin with detours to places like Korea, Thailand and Australia and temporary homes in Iraq and Afghanistan and many places in between. Well, Fort Carson is their next stop and 1-4 SBCT will write the next chapter with a new generation of Raider soldiers. The soldiers here today, though, have been very busy for the last six months. Redeployment and reintegration tasks, red cycle missions, and most importantly, the equipment redistribution and personnel transition to support the inactivation of the brigade. In just a few short months, we've turned over 45,000 of that 70, 72,000 pieces of equipment you heard of, to include all 314 of our beloved Striker vehicles. As part of that, we also transferred over 16,000 of those items to Fort Carson. And the advance guard of our Raider soldiers have left our ranks as well, with over 1,300 soldiers transitioning across uh, JBLM to 7th ID, 1st Corps, and across the Army as well. As impressive as those feats are in just a few short months, what the brigade accomplished during its eight-year tenure is even more extraordinary. Throughout the brigade's history, the brigade demonstrated that it was a unit of choice when it answered the nation's call. That first call came, as you heard, in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom as one of the five surge brigades. The next call came shortly after that with an accelerated Arfagen cycle to rapidly deploy again in support of OIF in order to advise and assist Iraqi security forces 
allowing coalition forces to successfully transition from Operation Iraqi Freedom to Operation New Dawn, which was symbolized by this brigade's tactical road march out of Iraq as the last combat brigade in theater, dubbed the Last Patrol. The final call came for deployment to Afghanistan, when the brigade once again demonstrated that it was ready, accountable, informed, disciplined, experts, resilient, and soldiers, families, and teams, second to none, as it accomplished the Operation Enduring Freedom mission there. Add to that Warrior Forge support here at JBLM to help train the next generation of leaders, a 10 separate month-long Yakima rotations, the first ever JRTC mission readiness exercise executed here at JBLM, not sure if JBLM's quite recovered from that. And uh, combat training center rotations both at the NTC and JRTC. Battalion level missions across the globe with our PACOM partners and new equipment training, fielding, and testing for the Army. At the battalion level, the 409 Infantry, the Manchus, deployed obviously in support of two OIF rotations, they fielded the Land Warrior System for the Army and conducted the first air assault exercise with 4-6 CAV during their reset. They executed six weeks of ROTC's Warrior Forge field support exercise, trained overseas for exercise Tiger Balm in Singapore, and walked two grueling iterations of the Manchu Mile, one just executed last week. Most recently, they served as the brigade's main effort that conducted six clearing operations for operations afar during the OEF rotation in Afghanistan's Horn of Panjwai. 223 Infantry, the Tomahawks, also deployed twice to Iraq, and following that second deployment, they shifted their focus to theater security cooperation missions. They deployed to Australia as part of Operation Talisman Saber, and shortly thereafter, hosted the Japanese Ground Self-Defense Force at Yakima for a bilateral training in support of Operation Rising Thunder. In November of 2012, Task Force Tom Hawk deployed to Spin Bulldog, Afghanistan, and conducted security force assistance, which fully enabled their Afghan partners to independently control key terrain, population centers, and transportation infrastructure while providing security and mobility for the area. During 138 Infantry's first OIF tour, the battalion worked for four different brigades as a strategic clearing force and later a landowning unit where it garnered significant accolades when it discovered an enormous strategic cache that was one of the largest ever found in Iraq. In 2010, the Rock Battalion closed a significant chapter in history as the last combat battalion to leave Iraq during OIF 910. And most recently, 138 Infantry returned from Afghanistan where the battalion set the stage for lasting security efforts through a Tenacious Security Force Assistance Operation in the Panjwai District during OEF 1213. Amongst those repeated deployments, the ROC has built enduring relationships with the local community here at JBLM. 2-1 CAV, the Blackhawks, exemplified their motto out front during their cavalry missions for two separate Iraq deployments where they executed operations Arrowhead Ripper, Justice League, and Ultra Magnus conducting partnered operations with Iraqi Army, Iraqi police, and Sons of Iraq forces, culminating in security for polling sites during the historic 7 March 2010 Iraq national elections. During their most recent OEF deployment, Task Force Blackhawk enabled the Afghan security forces to assume control of much of the Zabal province while providing critical training and support to six different Afghan Army Kandaks and two mobile strike forces. 212 FA Battalion, the Vikings, deployed twice to Iraq as a maneuver task force consisting of task organized field artillery and infantry companies, an engineer platoon, and three military transition teams. This task force still provided accurate and lethal indirect fires while partnering with and mentoring the Iraqi security forces. Later in Afghanistan, Task Force Angry Viking again organized as a maneuver task force, 
conducted security force assistance operations from 10 separate bases spread across Kandahar, Zabul, and Farah provinces. Task Force Angry Viking executed a diverse mission, advising, training, and assisting the Afghan National Security Forces. The Forge Battalion was in fact reflagged from 202nd BSB in 2009. So most re recently in Afghanistan, Task Force Forge provided maintenance and logistical support to combined Task Force 42 in Kandahar as well as 21 Cav over in Zabul Province. During the deployment, the BSB conducted hundreds of resupply missions and retrograded tens of thousands of supplies, scrap materials, repair parts, and accountable property from across the brigade footprint in support of CTF-42 and RC South's retrograde and responsible drawdown. The 702nd BSB anticipated and resolved complex sustainment problems by developing detailed plans and building a coalition of sustainment for more than 3,400 Raider soldiers. So like the Dragoon soldiers of the past and the Raider soldiers highlighted during these last three deployments, the soldiers of the Dragoon Raider Brigade are mounted experts that have superior mobility and versatility to successfully accomplish a wide range of missions. They stand before you today, the living embodiment of our creed on the back of your program, Raiders are. And they are the legacy of the brigade. This legacy also includes 58 of our finest that made the ultimate sacrifice and 536 wounded warriors from three grueling combat deployments. Our fallen Raiders, Gold Star families and wounded warriors will never be forgotten. Just as JBLM and 7th ID are a team of teams, so are the Raiders. And we have many members of the team that we are forever grateful to. Outstanding people, businesses, civic groups, and organizations that have supported the brigade through training and deployments over these eight years, enabling success in all venues. First up, our community connector, the city of Lakewood. Throughout our nine-year relationship, both the brigade and the city have uh, benefited tremendously from our collaboration. Special thanks to former Mayor Doug Richardson, Mayor Don Anderson, and former Police Chief Larry Saunders. All three were instrumental in fostering the relationship and striking up initiatives to mutually benefit the soldiers and families of the brigade and the city of Lakewood. For community organizations, the Lakewood subchapter of AUSA, as well as the Captain Meriwether Lewis chapter of AUSA, the local branch of our USO, the Lakewood Tacoma American Legion Post, as well as the newly minted Rally Point Six, have all supported the brigade phenomenally. And speaking of community connections, several members of the JBLM and South Sound community deserve special recognition for Raider support above and beyond. Denise Dane, Herb Schmeling, Joan Shalikashvili, Carlene Joseph, Ken Swarner, and Deanna and Wayne Robinson are all longtime Raider supporters and patriots of the highest caliber. Thank you for your support. You know, our units continue to stay connected with their historical roots as well, and we would like to offer special thanks to Medal of Honor recipient, Sergeant First Class retired Ron Rosser, Colonel retired Kendall, and Command Sergeant Major Maine for their continued inspiration and leadership as honorary members of our battalions and the brigade. To Team JBLM, the Raiders offer our gratitude and appreciation for the best support and partnerships found anywhere in the Army. People and agencies like Gary Humphreys and the DOL, Mike Peppers and the MTC, Catherine Doherty and GDLS, and the amazing soldiers, civilians, and leaders of the Acoma Training Center, 13th CSSB, 593rd ESC, and of course, 7th ID and 1st Corps. Without your efforts and the partnerships that we had with you, the Brigade would have accomplished far less than we set out to do. You make JBLM the best post in the Army to work and serve on. Thanks also go to our Raider families and family support team. You are the strength of our soldiers and are the reason that many of us do what we do. 
Thanks to all our Raider spouses and children for enabling your soldier to do what they love. And special thanks to all of our battalion and company FRG advisors, assistants, and leaders, past and present, for taking care of that which we all hold most dear, our families. Final thanks, rightfully so, are for the soldiers of the Raider Brigade. The men and women who have accomplished every mission that was asked with them with little fanfare and to the absolute highest of standards. Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you that these soldiers are ready for whatever mission 7th Infantry Division, 1st Corps, or the Army asks of them. Please join me in a round of applause for the soldiers of the Raider Brigade. So as we close this chapter of Army history and celebrate the many accomplishments of 4th Brigade, 2nd Infantry Division, the Raider Brigade, let us not forget that the legacy of the Brigade will never die, for the enduring legacy of the Brigade are the tens of thousands of soldiers that have passed through our ranks. They have grown and learned, become better soldiers and leaders, and transformed into the Raider soldier. Each of these Raiders is the legacy of the brigade. For wherever they go, whatever they do, they are making the people around them and the units that they are assigned to better. They are the living embodiment of Raiders R, and they are the legacy of 4-2 Stryker Brigade Combat Team. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming today and celebrating with us the great brigade, our great unit, and these awesome soldiers. Courage, trust in me, and Raiders, one last time, to the objective. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the 7th Infantry Division and Army songs. The words can be found in your program and remain standing for the retirement of the colors.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's inactivation and colors casing ceremony. Thank you for your attendance.